Hello, my name is Jonathan Wong from Georgia Tech. I'm going to give a lecture on piezotronics, a field we created in 2006. Piezotronics, what is it about? What we can do? If you look at this technology development, there's many things social as daily life. For example, that most of all try the speed, make the device smaller. Faster, faster. But today, with more personal, portable, and portable electronics, people look at the functionality. So, anywhere with speed and the functionality, drive into a smart system and a soul power system in a different direction. This is what we're looking at. When we look at a smart system, we definitely have human machine interface. How do we interface a human with a machine? Those operate in different mechanisms, different physics here. How do we interface? Well, silicon electronics work on semiconductor physics. You may work on mechanical sensation. And when you interface them, how do you do that? Early days, we demonstrated piezoelectric nanogenerators and piezoelectric materials. The idea is that on the mechanical strain, polar charge created at the two ends of the nanowires. This can be a driver force for the electron to flow at the external load back and forth if you have a block layer which prohibits the electron flow through the wire. So this is the driving force, and this is metal generator. Now let's change a bit. Let's say instead of get rid of this block layer here, so the electron can go through, on the mechanical strain, polar charge created. The polar charge can turn the transport of the charge carriers inside these semiconductor materials under the driving of the external voltage. This voltage drives the transport of the carrier here. But the presence of the, the polar charge here can greatly control the way the carrier flow through the interface. This is the core of piezotronics. Mechanical agitation produces a piezoelectric charge to tune the carrier transport process is the fundamental of piezotronics. We create this field with this analogy. Coupling between semiconductor and electricity and photoexcitation give you a few number of exciting areas. We are well known that optotronics is the fundamental of today's many technology. Here we produce the piezotronics, which is this coupling between semiconductor and the piezoelectricity. The fundamental physics lie at the interface of polar charge to the carrier transport process across a PN junction or across uh, 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 shorting contact. The first time we introduced this phrase was 2007, commandal piezotronics, and this is today's very popular effect. It's a fundamental physics effect and can be uh, applied for many different purposes. This is a simple case. Look at the solid state transistor. We have a source, we have a source, we have a drain, we have a channel. And the gate is controlled the channel width so that the current from the source drain can be controlled. So this is the fundamental. We control the channel width. Instead of control channel width, we can control the interface at which the charge will flow. And this idea is that regardless of the width of the channel, if we control the interface at which the carrier flow through here, this is the control. Same like this does. This control the channel width, this control the exit phase. You'll be able to control from tensile strain, and you can do the compressive strain, the, the polar direction of the polar uh, piezoelectric charge reverses. It's positive here, it's positive here. Then you can control the left hand side or right hand side of the device depends which what the strain you apply, the strain gated transistor. Let's look at a simple analogy here. We have a metal semiconductor contact. Metal semiconductor contact is such a case when the form of interface we can form a shorting contact. With the shorting contact we have a barrier. If this side is piezoelectric and semiconductor on the mechanical strain, polar charge created. Negative ion raise the barrier height. If you reverse the strain, positive ion at the interface lower the barrier height. This is raised or lower barrier height at the interface can gigantic change the transport of charge across the interface because it is exponential control. It's not a linear control. You can 
turn it on and turn it off just simply by this polar charge at the interface. So this is the fundamental of piezotron effect for metal semiconductor contact. If you make a single nanowire device, the two ends have contact. Shorty counter here, shorty counter here. Now it is a polar direction here. Let's measure. You apply a bias. Bias shifts the two Fermi level from this side and this side by the voltage you apply. In such a case, if you, in addition to the voltage you apply, you apply a tensile strength which can create a, a positive polar charge here, negative polar charge here, and then this positive voltage here the raise, lower the local barrier here. The lower the lo local barrier here, help the electron, the electron flows like this. Lower the barrier, the electron flow like this, lower the barrier, the electron can flow easy here. That's why on the tensile strain, you have a, it's device on. When you change the tensile strain to compressed strain, the lower voltage on this side, Low voltage side here, raise the barrier pipe. So electron flow like this, cut it off. So on the compressive strain here, it is off. So this on off can be a few hundreds or few thousands uh, ratio. This is a strain controlled transistor. Used to be this gain voltage, the strain gated transistor. This is the basic of this piezotronic transistor. So this is the lateral device. If you look at the extreme case, the first time we demonstrated this one was use a single boundary wire here on a tensile strain, on a compressor strain. On the tensile strain, you can see the chain. The dark curve was the original MP curve. On the tensile strain, the red curve become, is a diode this way. On the compressor strain, the green curve is a diode this way. Green and red are two reverse polarity. Why is this? It's because the polar chart here to the verify and the mechanism proposed in our two important letter of papers, the nano letters in 2008. And theoretically, we also work it out, besides, if you have a PA junction here, this is the driving force for the voltage driven curve. But this is the piezoelectric curve. You see, this is a positive quantity, but this can be positive and negative. If you have a positive piezo charge here, this is a positive quantity. The exponential positive number is enlargement, magnification. So large current can go through. But if you become negative current, this is exponential of a negative number. It becomes extremely small. It's cut the current off. This is a strain gated transistor from a simple equation point of point of understanding. So if we can make this kind of contact, we can tune the piezoelectric and tune the device. We can make a source, a drain, a source drain, on one flat substrate, the top and the bottom can form logic computation. And you can connect the, the right way, you'll be able to perform strain controlled logic computation. For example, you can use strain to control rather than the voltage control. And this kind of similar like conventional logic computation, but it is piezotronic logic computation. You can do many kinds of simple logic calculations based on our piezotronic Transistors. We not only make the lateral devices, we make a vertical device. This is the vertical device here. Vertical device. You can see that this vertical device, we are applying mechanical strain here, mechanical force here. You can produce a polar charge here. The presence of polar charge change the barriers when the carrier flow through here. We can shift the tunnel voltage to a higher value. As you see experimentally. Here, when the when the force increases from 420 nanonewton to 700 nanonewton, you can see the turn on voltage increase from half volts to about one and a half volts. If you fix it one volt here, one, one volt here, this is on, this is off. String gated switch, string gated switch. So this is the basic of one device. Now, if you can have an array of devices, for example. Classical semiconductor have the source, a train, a gate. The gate is giving you uh, occupied space. If you can't get rid of gate, this cannot be built a railway. So therefore, this package has to all go through the top. In such a case, if you get rid of this gate electron, use the internal field to replace it, you can have a, a 
new transistor called piezotronic transistor to these. If this is possible, you can build a cross bar electrode. You can have many of this one built based on this. We have fabricated a chip. This is called piezotronic transistor array chip. On one centimeter areas here, we have the device inside is nanowires, electrode, packaging material, fitting materials. Totally take a 31 steps from nanowire material sample compression, nanowire growth, to device fabrication to packaging. This is a piezotronic chip. Now let's look how this work. Let's analyze 92 of these channels. 92 of this transistor across this way, 92 this way. We can measure the transport on the fixed bias. You can see the current like this. Now if you apply a local strain here, you can produce a lot of tuning. This changed current give you the signal. But this can be two effects. One can be piezo-resistant effect, can be also piezotronic effect, which is which. I want to show you this piezotronic effect. Why? If you measure the whole 92 here, you have 92 this way, 92 this way. Over the 8,000 of piezotronic transistors give you a map or image. Okay. Why is this a piezotronic effect instead of piezo-resistant effect? Let's look at the measurement. This is associated with one pixel sweeping the bias from reverse bias to positive bias. Let's see the current change. Before we apply the pressure, after we apply the pressure, let's see the change. Before we apply the pressure, you measure the, uh, the transport when you're sweeping the bias from reverse bias to positive bias. Now, after you apply pressure, let's compare. On the positive bias, this was the current. After you apply the pressure, this was the current. The current reduces at the positive bias. But look at the current here. This is the reverse bias increases. On the reverse, the current increases. On the forward, it is the drops. This is the asymmetric change. It's because the asymmetric distribution chart, the two ends here, depend. This is non-symmetric. Which way the current flow depends? The local polar charge sign here, which dictate the transport across this interface. And in such a case, you can manipulate the transport. You see, if you say this is forward bias, this is reverse bias, you change the very high differently, change the characteristic of the current. In such case, the electron goes like this, lower the barrier to flow. But in this case, the, uh, the barrier changes here. It's, it's one go through as what's normally applied here. So the reverse current chain behavior is the fundamental characteristic of piezoelectronic transistors. Okay. What's the difference from piezo resistant effect? The piezo resistant effect is such, regardless of positive bias or reverse bias, if the current drops, it drops both ways. This is called symmetric change. Symmetric change. So therefore, it's fundamental different. It's a new effect, fundamentally different from piezo resistance effect. We use first and principle also calculate that. We have a silver, single side silver. You can calculate the distribution of polar charge at the two interfaces here from first principle. But disregard this complicated curves. You can derive the chain at a shortly buried height. When the strain chain from compressed strain to positive strain, you can see the shortly barrier at the one contact drops. And the other kind of increase, this in contrast change is the characteristic of a piezotronic effect. Utilize like this one, you can uniquely identify, identify it is piezotronic rather than piezo resistance effect. If you make an array 92 by 92, you can map the distribution of the, uh, of the force across the image. And you can have a character like this, this A, you can clearly map its distribution. Uh, in, in this piezotronic transistor array. So fundamental was the difference between piezotronic effect and piezo-resistant effect. Any semiconductor can have piezo-resistant effect. Piezotronic effect only for Wuzat and zinc plant uh, uh, semiconductors. This don't want to have a linear curve. This has a non-linear curve and can be rectified. This has a symmetric effect. It's regardless of which way you apply the bias, it is symmetric. But this is called asymmetric. Then this one 
This does depend which way is have a positive polar charge, which way have a negative polar charge. It's called it's asymmetric change. This is the asymmetric change is that if the barrier hydro base at this end will drop at this end, this is called asymmetric change. They have no priority, this have a strong priority. This is a volume effect, this is the interface effect. This have this can be a, cannot be a switch, it can only be a sensor, but this can be a switch. If it can be a switch, you can do the logic computation, you can do circuits based on this. So piece of one effect is a new effect. How do we really see the relationship between the piezotronic transistors and the semiconductor FET? First of all, this is the external voltage control. This is the inner crystal potential control. This relies on gain voltage, relies on strain producing inner crystal potential. This has three terminals, this has two terminals. This is the silicon materials, this is Wuzard based materials. This can be operated very fast, this operates slow, but in the kilohertz or megahertz range, or even slower. But for different applications, this is for computation, logic, or photonic, or this can have human environmental interfacing, sensors, methods, photonics, and many things. So therefore, both are complements and integration rather than replacing one with the other one. So this is how do we view the relationship between piezotronic transistor and the silicon FET. Piezotronic effect also in the thin films. It does not have to be nano. It's a universal effect. We have effect of P-type zincum nanowires and timidite doping. You can see when the doping level of timidite increases, the zincum size from 0.2% to 2%. The, the growth rate changes dramatically. But it does show P-type characteristic. P characteristic, characteristic yeah. And then you can see that inside the doping, it does not appear as a point doping. Here's a linear doping here, and more detailed line possibly can be found in our publications here. The reason I want to show you this one, this can be also p-type materials, can be also a piece of chronic transistor here. This is the transport. The blue curve is the transport on the zero strain. Okay. Sorry, the dark curve. The dark curve is the zero strain. Sorry, this is dark curve. On the 0.76 tensile strain, you see the current increase to here. But at the reverse bias, it dropped to here. This side increased, this side drops. Why so? It's because the different side of polar charge appears at the two different ends, which can raise the barrier and lower the barrier for the peak type of transport. This is a typical characteristic of tensile transistor in peak type materials. So it can be N type or P type material. Both have this characteristic. Can also be applied a range of semiconductors. Oh, does not have to be zinc oxide, gallium nitride, cadmium sulfide, cadmium selenide, and zinc and tin oxide. All these materials. If you look at the periodic table for the 26 compound semiconductor, all these materials we have shown have a piezotronic effect. If you have a sample for those ones, you can study yourself. I bet they should have a piezotronic effect. We have three five compound semiconductors. Gallium nitride, any nitride, all have this effect. I bet those ones should also have a piezotronic effect. And if you have the sample, you can do study. I want to show you one more case for the 2D materials. Molybdenum disulfide can have a piezoelectric and a piezotronic effect. If you look at the structure here, molybdenum disulfide for a single atomic layer, if you call it a unit cell, this is the unit cell, the set of cations and anions overlaps. Look, you stretch it or compress it from one direction, the center of the cations and anions polarizes, give you piece of electricity. Different pol polar direction here. But if you have double layer, if you look at the projection here, this have central symmetry. This have no central symmetry here, and this have central symmetry here. This should not have a piezoelectric effect. And we first time prove molybdenum sulfide can be piezoelectric depends on the, the, uh, the number of layers. And we tr carefully transfer molybdenum sulfide on a substrate and use Raman spectroscopy and other techniques to determine the orientation of the sample. We can make the electrode here. And as you can see, we lay down the substrate, we make the electrode here. If 
you bend the substrate here, this is our tensile strain. Polar charge appears at the two ends here, and this electrode here. In such a case, they have a voltage drop here, but the resistance is high. So the electron flow from the external load from here to here to balance the field here. You see a current. So this is called similar like the piezoelectric nano generator. Just use a single atomic. When you release the electron flows back, you see an AC output. We measure for single atomic layer, three atomic layer, five atomic layer. We see clearly the piezoelectric output of two layers, four layers, six layers, none. Proof the idea that this structure has central symmetry, this does not have central symmetry. So again, this is a typical nanoscale effect. And in fact, only one or three atomic layer molecular software should have. If you like than that, you don't have this effect. So it's a typical nano effect. It can also have a piezotronic effect. If a single atomic layer, atomic layer molecular by sulfur, you can have a zero strain, the blue curve. On the 0.71% tensile strain, on the positive bias, the current increases. Here, the current drops. This asymmetric change is because the asymmetric size of the charge at the two ends here, and which contribute to the characteristic. Now, if you have two layers, double layers here, you should not need to have piezotronic impact. This blue curve was the 0% strain on the 0.76% tensile strain. This current increase on the forward bias, on the reverse bias is also increased. This is called symmetric chain. This is typical piezo resistance effect. This is a typical piezotronic effect for 2D materials. And this can expand to many systems in the 2D materials. It can have an interesting implication for uh, related to the electronic photonic effect. So we show the piezotronic effect which is a coupling between semiconductor and piezo electricity, which is one of these areas we have been developed since 2006 to today. We have done numerous things associated with that, and uh, I'll leave that to uh, future lectures or so. So I hope, what is piezotronics? Piezotronics is an effect that you can buy piezoelectric charge at an interface that can control the carrier transport. You switch, we can fabricate circuits, logic, do logic computation as a switch. More detail can be found in a book I wrote a few years ago for piezotronics and piezophotronics quite by Springer and for the fundamental of piezotronics and piezophotronics. Thank you very much, and I uh, hope this provides something useful for the uh, piezotronics areas and anybody have an interest in that, feel free to contact us. Thank you.